Using swords is simple, right? You just stick them with the pointy end, don't you? Oh, what happens if there is no pointy end? Why do some swords not have points? Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator and Easton Antique Arms. I'm going to try and keep this relatively brief. This is a question that came up recently in a video that I did about African sword types. Uh, if you haven't checked out that video, um, then check it out. It's, um, I think it's worth watching. And I will be doing future videos on African swords. And this is an African sword. This is a Tacuba. Um, and you will notice that this has a rounded tip, as lots of them do. Now, some people commented, that's crazy, Matt. Why does this sword that looks, you know, superficially a bit like a medieval knight sword, why does it have a rounded tip? Why would anyone have a blunt tip? Well, the first thing I want to mention is this isn't blunt per se. This is actually really thin. Thanks to distal taper, this end of the blade is really, really thin. And despite the fact that it's not a point per se, absolutely, if you put this into the uh, geographic, ethnographic and historical context of this particular sword, in the region that this was used in, this point would be sufficient to give reasonable thrusts into people um, because that is still a sharpened radius around there. So despite the fact it's not pointy, you can still technically thrust with it. However, I'm not here to argue, I'm not here to convince you uh, that that is better than a pointy sword when it comes to thrusting. It's not. It is going to be more difficult to push that through clothing, for example, than it would with a pointy blade. So what's up with that? Why do some swords have rounded tips? And in fact, not just rounded tips. Here we've got a Chinese Dao, a massive great two-handed version. And you will notice that the tip of this, this is a sort of Ming Dynasty style uh, weapon. You'll notice the tip of this is almost completely square. And that's another feature we find on certain um, swords and tools from around the world. And yes, while you could jam this into someone, that tip is not going to pierce. It's essentially a square end. Um, whilst it'll pierce a little bit, it's not going to penetrate clothing and it's certainly not going to penetrate armour with any success. Even, um, you know, thick clothing would stop it. So this is a squared off tip. And here's another example, which um, again, you've seen fairly recently. This is the... Um, uh, the new windless uh, reproduction of the 1796 light -like cavalry saber, and this famously has what's called a hatchet tip, hatchet point. Now, you might be saying to me, Matt, that actually looks pretty pointy. Yeah, kind of, but you've got to remember this is also a fairly broad blade, and overall, that is a terrible shaped tip for penetrating clothing or anything else, really. So, whilst if you're lucky, you might be able to get it into things from certain angles with curved thrusts, it's never going to be a great penetrating point. It's not really designed for that. So what's up with that? Why do some swords have rounded tips, hatchet tips, or even squared tips? Well, quite simply, it comes down to method of usage. What are you going to be doing with that tool? In this case, this is a tool. This is actually an antique uh, machete. Um, it goes by various other names as well, but this is actually something that I regularly use in my garden for chopping back un undergrowth. It's edged on the inside here, and clearly you will see it has nothing even close to a tip on here. It's essentially like a bill hook. Now, this is absolutely useless for thrusting, but fantastic for chopping and cutting. Now, one of the reasons for that is because this curved edge gathers in things a bit like a sickle or a scythe. It gathers it in things here and shears them. But one of the other reasons is to do with center of percussion and mass distribution. The bigger and more blunt the end is, the further up the blade or lever, the centre of percussion gets. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what on earth is centre of percussion, if we just take a stick for a second, the most heavy hitting part of a stick and the most solid part of a stick to hit someone with will always be a region around here rather than the very tip. And that's to do with all sorts of things, uh, science that I'm not going to go into here, but just simply to know that if you hit it on your hand, you will feel this. So if you hit the tip of your hand with the tip, not really a big problem. It flexes, it takes away a lot of the energy. As you get to about there, ow, it starts to hurt. Okay, And this is the centre of percussion. However, this is a rod of equal diameter all the way 
way along and the mass distribution is completely even. Swords aren't like that. If we take the Takuba for a second, you will notice that the mass distribution here, the weight, the width rather, is very much down towards the hand. We've got a hilt, we've got a pommel, such that the point of balance is there. Okay, so it's way back towards the hand and it's got a tapering blade and fairly slender up here. So it's not weighted towards the tip. The stick, of course, being evenly distributed, balances in the middle. If we quickly compare that with an axe, and this would go for a mace, a warhammer, a flail, anything else like that, or a pole weapon, it's completely the opposite. The point of balance is at the far end, and notice where is the striking blade? It is at the top of the lever, whether it's the point or the axe. So this is gonna hit with a huge amount of um, energy into the target, but all of the mass is at the tip of the weapon at the cost of nimbleness and uh, quickness in the hand. So one reason to have a squared, rounded, or hatchet-like tip is to concentrate mass towards the tip of the weapon to give greater force in strength Striking. And this is something that we see very often in tools, um, even sometimes where it might be advantageous for some reason to have a point on the tool, they'll have a squared off or a rounded end because it means that you get more um, effect on the target hitting with the end of that tool. So essentially you want mass in the region where you are striking or hitting the thing that you're hitting. Now, secondly, we've also got the issue of edge geometry. When you have a slender tapering blade like this that comes down to a little point, what you end up with is a terrible edge geometry, almost square at the very, very tip. So the tip is always going to be terrible for cutting with when you have a very, very pointy sword. But it's a double whammy effect because not only do you have less mass up here, but also the edge geometry is less conducive to cutting. So with this type of sword, the best area to cut with is around here, and it's absolutely sucks at cutting up here. So coming back to the original question, in a nutshell, this is my answer. The reason that some swords have rounded, squared, or hatchet tips is because those swords are fundamentally designed primarily for cutting. In a culture where cutting is the way that swords are usually employed, they are rarely, if ever, used for thrusting, or the, at least that particular weapon isn't. They've got spears and other things for thrusting with, but that type of sword is used predominantly for cutting. This also relates incidentally to uh, late Roman Spartha, and migration era, even some Viking era swords. Um, and you'll notice that some swords are kind of a halfway house. So something like this Sudanese Cascara here has a very broad, almost spatulate tip, but it does have a little bit of a point on it. So they've hedged their bets. They've almost got a rounded tip, but they've got a little bit of a point to give it a bit better chance of biting into a clothed enemy and uh, puncturing them. However, it is still quite broad at the tip, and fundamentally, I believe this is about reach, because you can now cut effectively at the tip of the blade, which with a long and tapered and pointy sword, which is very good for penetrating with the thrust, it now means you can reach the target and have a good effect with cuts from a long, long way away with it, and it introduces better edge geometry near the tip for cutting, so the cut's more effective, and also a little bit more mass at the tip as well, again, making the cut more effective. So in a nutshell, why do some swords like these have squared, rounded, or hatchet tips? Fundamentally, the most obvious answer you can think of because they weren't really designed for thrusting. They were designed for cutting, so therefore they've sacrificed almost all of the potential for thrusting in order to make them as effective as possible for cutting with the very last bit of the blade, therefore giving you the greatest cutting potential with the greatest reach. And reach is a very important factor in combat. I hope this has been um, thoughtful and uh, useful to some of you, um, and I hope I'll see you back on the channel again soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.